Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Camilla Romanowski. I use she, her pronouns. And today I'm going to give a talk on some tips and tricks for scientific presentation. To give you a bit of information about myself, I'm a researcher based out of the BC Center for Disease Control, and I'm a third year PhD candidate here at UBC. I took ASON's class in 2020, and I'm one of the TAs this year. Now, before I begin, I'd like to preface this talk with the fact that I am by no means an expert on presentations or science communication. I just personally believe that we should put as much focus on learning how to communicate our research as we do other aspects of our training, and ASON has graciously allowed me to present some of the things I've learned over the years. Also, none of the ideas I present here are my own unique ideas, but rather an accumulation of tips from work workshops, books, and advice from science communicators I admire. Also, before I begin, I'd like to respectfully acknowledge that I live and work on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples, including the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. So to start, I'd like to ask how many of you have been at a conference or a presentation and seen a slide that looks like this? Bright blue background, tiny yellow font, very hard to read. Slides like this seem to be a common theme among conferences I attend. Unfortunately, seeing a slide like this automatically makes me wish that I had just stayed in bed. The presenter could be speaking on the most interesting topic in the world, but with slides like this, I find it really hard to focus because I'm busy trying to read the tiny font and decipher the complicated figure. It also doesn't help that everything that is being said is written word for word on the slide. Now, if your slides look like this, please don't take this as a personal attack. I just think that we can and we should do better. So how can we do better? Well, to start, I recommend that we think about our slides last when making a presentation. Now, I realize this seems very counterintuitive, but before we even get to our slides, we should think about what it is that we wanna say, because our presentation needs to be able to stand on its own. Often, we think of slides as presenter's notes, but really, presentations are much more effective when we think of slides as a visual add-on to our own words. So instead of starting with a slide deck, start with a blank Word document and write out a script of what you wanna say. When writing your script, the first thing you should think about is your key message. What is it that you really want people to remember? What message do you want them to take home? Everything in your talk should build towards and support that central message. If it's unrelated, don't include it. I often find that with scientific presentations, we get bogged down with details and loads of information, and most of this information is forgotten before the talk is even finished. So the more details you include and the more complex your talk, the more clear you should be on what it is that you want your audience to hear, understand, and remember. If the audience only remembers one thing, what should it be? Now, the other thing to consider when writing your script is your audience you wanna put your audience first. Gear your presentation to the knowledge and needs of your audience. As Dr. Jennifer Gardy once put it, use language and tone that follow the party rule. Explain your topic as if you were talking to someone you just met at a party. You know that they're smart, but you don't know their exact background. So use lay language, avoid scientific jargon and abbreviations, and try to find relatable real world analogies or examples to include in your script. And then for the last thing when you, to, to remember when writing your script is that you're telling a story. A presentation is your story. So often with scientific presentations, we present our research as here's the background, here are the methods, here are the results, and here's the conclusion. However, if we reframe it and think of it as a story with our background as the beginning, our methods as the middle and the results as the end, all of a sudden our presentation becomes much more interesting. So for the beginning of your story, hook your audience early. Tell audience members right away why they should care and what's in it for them. What problem will your work help solve? What brought you to this point and why is what you're doing important? Then for the middle, provide highlights of what you did. Present them in a logical order, but avoid going into excruciating detail. Now, I don't know about you, but I get really excited over new methods and I wanna share the details. 
The only problem is that most people don't care about the nitty gritty details of group based trajectory modeling. In fact, I can often see people's eyes glaze over when I start going into details during presentations. So keep it simple. Provide a brief overview of what you did, and if people are interested in the steps that you don't discuss, they can follow up. Then conclude your story by summing up your key points and why, um, why they are important. Again, keep everything in context and highlight what it is that you want people to remember. Okay, so now you have your script. You have a clear message. You've put your audience first. You've written out your story. Well, now what? Well, now it's time to make a slide deck that visually enhances what you're saying. I recognize that most people will use PowerPoint to make their slides, but today I'd like to encourage you to break up with the traditional templates and bullet points associated with PowerPoint. Templates are often restrictive and bullet points are not how most people think or learn. However, I recognize that this can seem very daunting and overwhelming. So I've made a few quick and easy suggestions to help you get started. First, the easiest thing you can do to improve your slide deck is to increase your font size. Sounds silly, but really increase your font size. With text, less is always more. Slides with a lot of text are like a handout given during class. As soon as you're given the handout, your head goes down to read it and you stop listening. If there are a lot of words on your slide, then what you're asking to, your audience to do is to split their attention between what you're saying and what they're reading. And this is something that's really hard for our brains to do. So increase your font size and decrease the amount of text on your slide. Also, think about if there's a way that you can add a visual to help support what you're saying rather than putting it in text. For example, for this class, my project looked at immigration status and perceptions to shared healthcare decision making. To give some background and context, I spoke about barriers to shared healthcare decision making, but rather than just listing those as bullet points, I found three graphics that represented the barriers, and I just made a slide of those. Now, if your slide does require some bullet points, stick to three to five points max per slide and keep them to the key points. Also, make sure that you have a strong contrast between your background and text, not blue and yellow, but black or dark blue text on a white background. And don't use all caps because that can make it really difficult to read. If you wanna highlight a point, use bold or italics. Now, another quick win is creating a slide deck that has a consistent look and feel. In a good slide deck, each slide should feel like it's part of the same story or the same family. This means using the same related fonts, colors, and imagery across all of your slides. You can essentially think of this as your own brand template. For me personally, this meant that I created a set of template slides for my PhD research using the same colors, fonts, and graphic elements. While it was a lot of work up front, I can now just use these templates anytime I'm giving a presentation, whether it's for a class project or it's part of my, my PhD research, and I can tweak them as needed, but they all have the same cohesive and consistent theme. Now, here's the tricky bit. You don't actually want each slide to look exactly the same like they do with a PowerPoint template. So you need to consider topic transitions to give your presentations a little bit more texture. So generally what I like to do is create one style of slides that is the, for the bulk of what I'm saying, and then another style for the transitions between topics. So what you'll notice in my presentations is that my general slides have a light background with a dark text, but my transition slides are repeats of the steps to presentations with different parts emphasized. Um, a really easy way though to add a transition slide is just to use a dark colored, dark colored background and a light colored text um, for your transitions if you're using a light colored slide um, with dark text for the bulk of your presentation. This way, all of your slides are still part of the same family, but your audience gets a visual cue that they, you're moving on to the next topic. Okay, so we have a few quick wins. Increase your font size, three to five bullet points if you're using them, consistent theme and high quality visuals. Now, this next tip isn't a quick win. If, in fact, it might seem quite unnecessary. However, I think it's really important and it relates to how you're presenting your findings. So for this last tip, 
I recommend that you reproduce simple charts, graphs, and tables, focusing on information that is central to your story. Ask yourself, can the audience easily understand my graph or figure? Now, in terms of data visualization, I think it's such a shame that UBC doesn't offer a data visualization for public health course. But if you want a great example of beautiful public health visualization, please go follow Justin McElroy on Twitter. He should teach a masterclass on this topic. His COVID-19 charts are beautiful, they are easy to understand, and they clearly communicate the findings. Um, if you're a ggplot user, Cedric Shearer is another data visualization expert, and he has created a ggplot tutorial for beautiful plots, which I've linked as a resource. Now, if you don't feel like getting very fancy, some very simple things you can do. Remove the background and the grid lines, keep the access ticks simple, and make sure that your variables are fully written out and not just presented as they are coded in your data set. Also, if you're making it in ggpoint, at the very least, just change up the colors from the automatic blue and pink. And again, really consider what key message it is that you want your figure to convey. Now, in terms of tables, if you have to state in your presentation, I'm sorry, I know that this table is hard to read. You need to adjust the way that you're presenting that table. So for example, rather than copying and pasting a table one directly into your slide deck from R or whatever program you're using, think about if there are any specific variables you'd like to focus on and highlight and just present those. And if you have time, take those few extra minutes and remake the table using the fonts and colors of your presentation. While this may seem like needless work, it can really make your presentation feel consistent and thought out, and it also gives you a chance to think about if you're presenting your findings in an audience appropriate way. Now, one thing I find to be really helpful with charts and figures and tables is literally spelling out what I want the audience to get out of that image. And this can be done in a few ways, but the easiest are either just putting a box around a key area or using a really big arrow. So again, using an example from this class, I didn't want to present a table with an odds ratio because I don't think that that's the most intuitive to interpret. So I quickly drew a forest plot, a forest plot in the program I used to make my presentation. And then I added a huge arrow summarizing what I wanted the audience to get out of the figure. Since I knew this presentation was among classmates, I kept it in quite a bit of detail. But remember, think about your audience when deciding how much information it is that you want to include. Okay, so now you have your script and your slide deck, and you're ready to give your presentation. Well, you're almost ready. The last tip I can give you is don't forget to practice. Learn your script. Find a group of colleagues, classmates, or friends who are willing to listen to your talks and give you constructive feedback. And when it comes time to presenting, don't forget to breathe, speak loudly, make eye contact. And remember, the more presentations you give, the easier it gets. Also, as a minor note, Murphy's Law dictates that something will go wrong with your for file format, excuse me, when it's time to present. And so to avoid any troubles or any weird formatting, save your presentation as a PDF. All right, to summarize. Your slide deck is not an extension of your notes, but rather a visual add-on to your words. So for your words, remember to stay focused on your key message and to consider your audience. For your slides, keep it simple and cohesive, and if nothing else, increase your font size. And for presenting, don't forget to practice and have some fun with it. Thank you. So I wanna thank you all so much for your attention today, and I hope you learned something useful. If you have any questions pertaining to the content of this presentation, please feel free to reach out. My email and Twitter handle is listed. Also, I'd like to thank ASON for giving me the opportunity to present today, and I wish you all the best of luck in making your presentation. Thanks again. And the last slide is just linked with a whole bunch of resources.